All right, good day, everyone. And welcome to today's presentation, Your 2023 Opportunities, NEC Code Updates, the IRA, and more, sponsored by Schneider Electric. My name is Colleen Beatty, and I'm the senior editor here at Electrical Contractor Magazine. On behalf of the magazine, I want to thank everyone for attending today's presentation. Now, before we get started, I just want to quickly go over some housekeeping items just so that you know what, how to navigate through the council. So first, please note that today's presentation is being recorded and we'll be providing you with a link to the recording after the webinar is over. So if you miss anything or have to leave early, that's fine. You can come back anytime and watch the recording when it works for you. And of course, we encourage your participation in today's webinar, so please send us your questions. You can submit them at any time during the presentation using the Q&A module on the bottom right of your screen, and we'll have time at the end of the webinar to answer them. You can also use the Q&A window to reach out if you have any technical difficulties like audio problems. And there's also a quick survey that should pop up on your screen at the end of the webinar, and we hope you'll fill that out. Um, or if you'd like to fill it out sooner, just click the uh, pink icon with the clipboard at the bottom of your screen to open it up at any time during the webinar. So with all that out of the way, I'd like to introduce today's speakers. Please give a warm welcome to Brad Wills, Schneider Electric's Director of U.S. Strategy, Strategic Customers and Programs, and Rob Young, Schneider's Director of U.S. Partner Development. And I'll let, you, I'll let them tell you a little bit more about themselves. So welcome, Brad and Rob. Thanks, thanks. I'll get started here and then turn it over to Rob who will get us kicked off. And we have a lot of content to take you through today. So we're gonna, we're gonna try to move very fast to get through some of this, but please, uh, you know, put uh, questions in the Q&A and we'll do our best to answer those today. Or if not, we will follow up with you and get answers to those. Uh, so Brad Wills, I've been at Schneider uh, 29 years in a lot of different roles, but mostly in and around the residential business. Today, I take care of our home builder program, overview of our, our marketing uh, uh, programs, and a little special attention to our new wiring device line, which we'll go into more detail later. Rob? Yeah, thanks, Brad. Happy holidays, everybody. Uh, really uh, finishing up tur Thanksgiving Turkey Day here and uh, looking forward to a great Merry Christmas and holiday season to you and your family. So. And for me personally, uh, go Navy, beat Army. That's the big game uh, coming up this weekend for me. <laughs> so uh, go Navy. A um, little background on me. I've uh, been in the uh, electrical business literally my whole life. My dad was a gray bar for 45 years and uh, been with Schneider Electric off and on for about 20. Manage our home and distribution business development team here for the U.S. And really uh, for our existing customers that are on the call today, let me uh, just offer a, a tremendous thank you for the support for Schneider Electric and our Square D branded products that you all purchase every day. Uh, without, a, without you guys buying our products and gals buying our products, uh, we, our team doesn't have a job. So thank you for what you do for us every day. And um, uh, so let's, let's move on quickly into the agenda and more than happy to take questions in the chat. And um, uh, we'll, we'll try and get through that uh, pretty quickly here and see if you have any questions. So I wanted to just do a quick recap for the NEC 2020. As, uh, <clears throat> as you all know, uh, the NEC adopts at various different stages across the states. And uh, right now we have uh, 24 states, uh, that's as of October, we have 24 states that have adopted the NEC 2020. We know that in 2023, California will come on with uh, their version of the National Electrical Code. And later in the year, we'll start to see the adoption in other states, including uh, Florida, another big state that'll come on in, uh, in December 31st of, of 2023. So real quick on, on that front, uh, some issues that you, just as a refresh on 2023 code, uh, ground fault protection uh, is required now in, uh, in several different app, uh, applications within the home. And um, so you'll see there, uh, you'll see there it talks about uh, kitchens uh, now requiring ground fault protection in 2020 code for appliances uh, that are, uh, this is, uh, and that's uh, outlets, appliances that are connected to outlets within six feet of the sink. And um, and also finished basements, uh, outdoor HVAC units, although we'll update you on 2023 code on HVAC units. There's been some issues with HVAC uh, equipment in the field, tripping ground fault breakers. 
And uh, so there's been a delay, and we'll talk about that in a second. And then, th- you know, many other locations throughout the house in the NEC 2020. So we do offer uh, uh, ground fault breakers. We also now offer ground fault receptacles. And our dual function breaker, which includes both arc fault and ground fault, can be used in those applications. Um, in the NEC 2020, uh, surge protection was extended to uh, dwelling units, both one and two family dwelling units, as well as uh, multifamily. But again, we're going to focus today on single family. So surge protection is required at the point of service entrance or at each next level downstream. So what that means is if you've got an outdoor disconnect in the NEC 2020, which is the next thing we're going to talk about, um, you can put your your, your SPD there and, um, and you're covered. Um, <clears throat> regardless if you've split that service off into two subpanels or, or whether you have no sub subpanel. Uh, if you do have, um, let's just say a 400 app booth connect um, that's, that's feeding the service and you need to split that into two 200 amp panels and you couldn't have, you couldn't find a way to connect your SPD at the point of service entrance in that 400 amp device, um, then you can go put that in both uh, of the downstream locations. So that's what it means by the next downstream, uh, next level downstream. So um, either at the service or all locations downstream from there. Now, of course, we follow IEEE, IEEE guidelines where we um, encourage uh, cascading. So we think it's great to put it at the point of service entrance and as close as possible you know, to your loads. Uh, personally, I've got it at my service and then also on certain appliances like my AC compressor outside um, and my dryer uh, circuits in the house. So, so some things that are important to me and my wife to keep protected from surges. Outside disconnects were, um, were changed in the NEC 2020 as a result of the fire service and emergency responders wanting to be able to turn off the, the service uh, to, a, to a one and two family dwelling um, they are now requesting outside disconnects be installed. We've got a multitude of, of either rainproof load centers, combination service entrance devices, uh, CSEDs, uh, enclosed circuit breakers that meet the National Electrical Code requirement for the outside disconnect. So those also, uh, not only do we need to have the disconnect to be outside now so that the emergency responders and first responders can roll up on the, uh, on the issue and turn off the power, um, they also have to be properly marked. And so you can see a little red label there that we've put in there that needs to be on the outside of the device that properly labels that as the outside disconnect means. So those are some of the highlights on single family changes just when it comes to the Schneider Electric effect it offers for single family. Um, in a little greater detail for SPDs or surge protective devices, uh, it's a little bit like prints. Those things were formerly known as TVSS. So you can see that we have a multitude of offers ranging from good protection for SPDs with our surge breaker line to better up to 25 and, and uh, 50 KV, uh, KA ratings and then um, 80 KA ratings that you can find in our uh, other devices. So we have a multitude of different products that can be used to suit the applications. Some can be installed in the panel if you have branches, uh, branch feeders on the outside of the house, or you can, um, you can use some of our pigtail connected devices that can be connected um, where appropriate and per code on the outside disconnect for the home. So we have a multitude of offers again that, that uh, will cover all of your applications for single family surge protection. Outside disconnecting means uh, we, we are in the process of launching um, a new uh, CSED combination service entrance meter main. Um, some of you may be using a combination device that's overhead underground feed, and we appreciate the business we enjoy with that product. It's one of our uh, higher volume units, be like an RC816 or a QC816 um, F for feed through. And uh, we're, we're now coming with a new device that is designed primarily for or designed for underground service. These days we see the vast majority of new services going in to be underground. So we wanted to create a device that was a little easier to install, lighter weight, smaller, more compact. And uh, that's what this new CSED does for, for us. 
and you, it gives you a smaller device that can be used for underground service only. And as Brad starts to mention about some of our grid to plug or our connected future of Schneider Homecoming, um, in this CSED, we can now not only install surge protection devices on the outside, either plug on neutral or pigtail, it has the, the ability to include GFCI protection for outside circuits, and um, it is the capability to have solar ready, so you can see we can plug CTs in. And most importantly, Brad will talk more about Wiser, Wiser Energy Manager. Um, we can connect that device all in one on the outside of the home so that we can now monitor the energy being used in all circuits. So a lot of great things coming with this. We're excited to get this product into the marketplace um, as 2023 starts to roll out. Okay, we do have current offers again that that are designed for this application, but this again is designed for outside service disconnects where you have underground service. Also new in in 2022, we revised our dual function circuit breakers on QO. So what we've done there is we've decreased the footprint. We've made it side-by-side -side terminations. Those terminations are also what backed out wire binding screws. That reduces the amount of time that you need. You don't have to back the screw out now. You can slide the wire into the terminal and then screw it down. And uh, we've also changed, as you can see, the look and feel of the handle to be more visible in the panel. Um, we've also, as you can see in the picture, we've labeled the devices as AF slash ground fault. So now you know that that breaker is an arc fault ground fault without having to look just at the color of the push button. And there's two other things. With QO, we did keep visit trip there, but what really is exciting about this offer is you'll notice this little yellow area there. It's called our service light. So we have added um, an LED monitor to the product but we've done something very different. Our voice of customer said they like to know why the circuit breaker trips. It could be an arc fault, could be a ground fault. It could be a grounded neutral or some other things that you guys look for in, in when you're diagnosing the circuit. But what the most, what we see in our customer care center calls is that those circuits are actually overloaded many, many more times than there is an arc fault or a ground fault on that circuit. So what we were at was we noodled with our customers on that. What we came up with was the idea for the service light to act more like the check engine. So you're all familiar with vehicles that have a check engine light on it. When that light comes on, that's designed to notify the driver that they should take the vehicle to the dealer for service. So with our service light, when that light is comes on, initially when the breaker is energized, it says the breaker is working properly. Within a second, that light will extinguish. It'll go out, and that tells the user that's all is well. Now, when that breaker trips, if it has what we call an electronic trip, an arc fault or a ground fault, that light, when re-energized, will come on for a second to let you know that the breaker is good, and then it will have a series of different indications to inform you, the installer, of what the actual um, a fault level that occurred. So now with these breakers, we can separate a ground fault from a grounded neutral and several other things that you can see in the diagnostics that when you go into the literature details. But what's really important for you all to know is that if that light comes on instantly and then extinguishes after a trip event, then that breaker has experienced a short circuit or most frequently an overload. Again, what we see is most of these breakers are tripping because we are running too much amperage through the circuit. We've got a dryer, a hair dryer, we've got a vacuum cleaner. Maybe they've got a bunch of Christmas lights this time of year plugged onto the circuit and we're overloading that circuit. So now, when that breaker is re-energized, the light comes on within a second and then it extinguishes. You can ask the homeowner if that light comes on and then you know you need to roll a truck. If the light doesn't come on, you can advise the homeowner right there on the phone that they have more than likely overloaded that circuit. So, and you know how to you know, tell them to reduce the loading. 
So that saves you all the real uh, expensive part of rolling a truck out just to reset a breaker because the circuit is overloaded. So we're really excited about some of the things on this new breaker that it'll bring to you, as well as some new technology that we've put into art fault detection, which we're, we've sold several hundred thousand of these breakers here in the last six months to a year and uh, receiving outstanding results in the field. So uh, we are coming with arc fault breakers in the same format a little bit later in, uh, well, earlier in 2023, and then also home line will follow later. So if you haven't seen these devices, I encourage you all to, uh, to take a hard look at these and put them in, into your panels. Uh, maybe a reason to actually to switch from, from home line to QO, or if you're uh, somebody that's buying one of those e other evil brands, to switch from them over to, to the good guys here at, at Square D. So outstanding and a lot of fun about this breaker, a lot of good things. And, um, and as you'll see here on this slide, highlights some of the product differentiations that we're seeing uh, between our old and new uh, devices. Again, uh, you know, the, the backed out terminals and side by side are really nice. And that check engine light or that service light, really a big feature, not to mention the revised firmware that, uh, you know, will continue to help detect true arcs in the field or true grounds, but also will distinguish those nuisance strips from things that you've seen in the past. Uh, really excited about that product. Now let's go back on to uh, 2023 and talk about some of the changes that we're going to see in the NEC 2023. So the code breaking panel is uh, is is now completed all of its work and uh, all of its findings. So a lot of things that you're going to see when it comes to single family homes in the NEC 2023, and I've listed out here some of the article changes, is around ground fault. So GFCI expansion will now be extended to all kitchen receptacles, which eliminates the six foot re requirement. Most contractors I know couldn't figure out, you know, in advance of whether or not that, that oven was gonna be within six foot of the sink. So you went ahead and had to price it in. And then you have inspectors out there measuring, is it six foot one inch or is it five foot 11? Clarifies that. And also, um, I have a personal situation where my daughter has a new home down in Nashville, and, and she had moved her dryer on a three-wire circuit to her new house. It was a four-wire circuit. I actually found <clears throat> arcing inside that as I was changing the pigtail. And, uh, boy, I'll tell you what. Um, so, anyway, that's some of the things that you'll see there. Um, also extended in, in the areas of the home where sinks are there uh, needed. Now, most inspectors are already looking at uh, wet bars throughout the house, so that's maybe where, it, you know, or some homes have a second kitchen um, or a food prep area, so you're going to have to have ground fault in that location. Now, when I mentioned earlier in 2020 code about uh, HVAC units and outside under 2108F, and so in the 2020, it required that ground fault protection uh, quickly in Texas, we found that there were a number of HVAC units that were uh, found to have ground faults. So as a result, we're def the, the National Electrical Code is delaying the implementation of outside uh, protection for uh, 50 amp and less, 250 volt and less receptacles um, and outlets until September 1st of 2026. This will give um, the manufacturers uh, a better chance to harmonize uh, the operation of the HVAC unit with GFCI protection. So there's a lot of background, lot of background on that particular topic, but uh, uh, so you'll, you'll see that come in forward in the NEC 2023. Also, surge protection. <clears throat> Excuse me. In the NEC 2020, there was no requirement for, um, for the non called surge current. So now the devices are required to be no less than 10 kA. So all of the on our 2020 slide, all of those are either 10 kA or higher. I think that's a clarification that was needed within the National Electrical Code. Um, another requirement says that an SPD will be required at a sub panel if supplied by an alternative source. So if you have an outside disconnect, that would be feeding and then an inside panel, TS, 
in between that feeder and that sub panel where the sub panel was getting under normal utility uh, conditions, it was getting its surge protection from the outside disconnect. When you switch over to a generator, there's no surge protection now in the in the distribution panel, the distribution sub panel. So now you'll have to put an SPD there. And the reason that happens is because what we find is IEEE and other uh, independent studies is that about 80% of the surges that we see on circuits come from within the home. So it's really important to know that when a motor kicks on, there's a surge. And those, those surges put in harmonics and other things across the circuits that start to impact, you know, the electronics in the home. So really important notification here. We're not going to talk too much about multifamily today, but if you do any multifamily, now you'll be required to put SPDs under the 2023 in all of the tenant panels that you see. So that's not single family, but again, just a heads up on that one. Um, when it comes to wiring devices, some interesting things came about on wiring devices. Most of us have seen uh, receptacles that are located on islands. Usually they're under the overhang of the, of the countertop. Um, what has been reported to the, S the CPSC, that's the Consumer Product Safety Commission, is many times you would see like a crock pot um, under, uh, under power in, in warm or hot uh, cooking food. And that power cord would be extended over the edge of the counter and underneath to the plug um, on that island. And children have been running through the house or going through the house or maybe even, you know, somebody with, you know, accessibility issues maybe uh, catches a, a wheelchair or a, or a walker. Those crock pots off the countertop and have scalded a lot, of, uh, a lot of people, especially children, in those applications. So now the National Electrical Code is not requiring an island to have a receptacle. It does say, though, that if the if the receptacle is installed, you need to apply uh, uh, you need to install it in accordance with 21052C3, which primarily will say that, as you can see here, we've got a pop up receptacle under the island. So uh, something there to make sure that you're aware of. Now, if you do have your island and it's got, let's just say, a surface above it or a, maybe a, a counter over top of it that's more than 20 inches above the surface of the island. Um, then you can put a receptacle underneath um, that particular part. So um, it really um, is there for safety and want to make sure that you all were aware of that change in the National Electrical Code for 2023. Um, the last particular thing I'm going to discuss today when it comes to the NEC 2020 really is a lot of what Brad is going to talk about is the future electrification in the United States. We all hear talk about electric vehicles. We know that um, net zero emissions is, are really becoming important to, to states like California. And we all know that just like T-shirts and surfboards, what starts in California eventually gets to the East Coast. So um, EV service equipment, if you'll, there's a lot of new things in the National Electrical Code for electric vehicle su uh, supply equipment. And I've listed out here several of the things, and I encourage you to study this. Um, we are seeing many, many municipalities, many states, um, many energy codes requiring either provisions for or the installation of electric vehicles uh, charging equipment. So uh, please make sure you take a look at this. Again, I'm not going to read through all the provisions visions here. Um, and there are some changes also when it comes to EMS or energy management systems. So there's some things that if there's an installed enlisted energy management system or the EV has its own energy management system on that service, it allows you to, to, to change how you're, you're calculating the loads. So I want to encourage everybody that's going to be working um, in 2023 code markets to look closely at all the changes for uh, EVSE or electric vehicle supply equipment. Um, you can see here the new electric vehicle uh, charger that Schneider Electric has, has launched. And um, you'll see many, many other things coming from us as 2023 begins to progress. So Brad will get into that. 
I um, want to talk here also about 220.70, which is energy man management systems. <clears throat> I, I mentioned our Wiser product earlier in the, in the uh, presentation. So energy management systems such as Wiser and what you're going to see from Brad, um, that is now going to be able to be used in calculating uh, service loads under certain conditions. So be sure to familiarize yourself with uh, 220.70. Uh, we're seeing a lot of homes that used to have a 200 amp service uh, with one, maybe two EV chargers, now requiring 225 amp or maybe even 300 amp services. So please be, be sure to familiar yourself with these requirements and also for, for remodel. Last thing I want to mention is uh, emergency disconnects. We talk about the outside disconnecting means for single family in NEC 2020. Uh, what the, what the code-making panel realized that some homes under certain conditions where utility power is lost, um, they may have an outside disconnect that is not the utility service. So now those will be required to be marked um, as, as an outside disconnect as well. So you'll see that on generators, batteries, and, and other things where the service is disconnect is required now for alternative sources besides utility. So just make sure if you're seeing those kind of things, you, you, you get caught, caught up on that. So that's a quick highlight, maybe not so quick, but a quick highlights of what I've seen related to single family and related to some of the products that Schneider Electric um, offers under Square D brand when it comes to the NEC 2023. So with that, uh, Brad, I'm going to reintroduce you to the team and yep. let's talk about the IRA. Yeah, yeah. So before I dive into some of the mechanics or numbers of of the Inflation Reduction Act, I first just wanted to talk about, you know, what's happening in the marketplace as we look at what homeowner expectations are. And these are just a few stats that I pulled uh, off uh, online, just showing, you know, kind of some of the things that are going on, like 34% increase in Resi Solar just between 2020 and 2021. Obviously, California is driving a lot of that, but there's more and more solar outside of California as well. Uh, more and more batteries. So people are realizing, hey, if I want to use that solar during an outage, I need a battery. If I want more resiliency, I need a battery. Obviously, EVs are are uh, are expanding at a at a record pace. And and what you see with homeowners is, yes, sustainability is important. You know, we want to be greener. We want to reduce uh, CO two emissions particularly with the millennial buyer who is now the majority buyer of new homes in the United States. So that younger buyer is the majority owner of all new homes, uh, but also resiliency. And that's becoming even more important as in this post COVID world as as we're all working more and more from home, um, having resiliency at your house, because it's no longer just about missing your favorite show on Netflix. It's now uh, not being able to do something like what we're doing today. Um, and then efficiency as we have, you know, aging grid with higher cost um, and, and more dynamic pricing uh, spreading throughout the United States on electricity, finding ways to be more efficient, particularly as you're work, you know, again, working more from home and you're foregoing some of those setback opportunities maybe you had in your HVAC, or other electrical usage in the house. So those things are driving it. And a big factor that's gonna, that's gonna I think be really beneficial for this audience is uh, the Inflation Reduction Act. So there's still a lot of details to come out about that. But when, you, when we, we've done some early research on the act and our government affairs team has helped us look at what some of the opportunities might be. But for instance, uh, putting in a new heat pump that might include a panel upgrade as well as some new wiring. Uh, that, depending on income level, that could be um, uh, rebated all the way up to 100%. So there's gonna be opportunities for, home, for lower income homeowners to have 100% of that. Even medium level income, you're talking uh, over half of that could be uh, rebated or, re, or re, uh, to the to the home to the homeowner likewise with solar system uh, solar systems uh, you know if you look at at maybe nineteen thousand dollars for a solar install almost up to half of that or more could be rebated depended on um, 
on your income level and geography. Uh, same with EV chargers. So there's going to be significant opportunities for this audience of electrical contractors to go out uh, and look at a, you know look at a homeowner who maybe just needs a basic panel upgrade, and and that would they'd have to pay the full cost of that. We'll make that a smart panel, and now uh, maybe uh, up to half or more of that is 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 rebated. It actually ends up costing the homeowner less. They get more. You sell more. So I think there's going to be huge opportunities, particularly in retrofit. But we're also looking at how this is going to apply to new construction. And then you know another dynamic of of homes is they're becoming more or all electric, and so we're seeing that particularly in California where there's in new construction areas where it's all electric, no, no gas infrastructure is even being run into these new communities. That is, that's gonna be a challenge on, you know, trying, how do you keep a home at a 200, two, or 225 amp service and not have to jump to a 400 amp? Well, some of the solutions I'm gonna show you here are gonna be able to uh, uh, eliminate the need for a 400 amp service down the road. Um, but also a bigger, you know, bigger issue there is the existing base of homes that are out there. So as, as homeowners go to electrify their house and all of a sudden need a 400 amp service, which could have ripple effects back to the utility infrastructure itself, the wire run to the home, the transformers, et cetera, uh, there's going to be a need to find a more intelligent way to manage the total load on a home uh, other than just uh, the main breaker. So what we've what we've done is we, we we have launched and are moving down this path of if you will a grid plug approach. So you think about from power coming from utility or solar or generator or that new Ford F one hundred and fifty Lightning pickup truck that you can use to charge your house. You have multiple sources or paths of electricity that are coming in through the home. So we have we've introduced what we call our energy management system with the center, that being the, the energy center itself. What you're seeing there picture, and I'll show more detail of this later, but what you're seeing there picture in the middle is a solution that is uh, for California today and is in the California market today. Um, and it's also, what it does is it eliminates the need for uh, multiple enclosures, consolidates those, it's the main panel and the backup panel all in one, and it's connected with our Wiser Smart Energy, but on top of that, we're introducing uh, relay control that can go into that panel. So now you can have monitoring control at the at the branch level, either on single pole or two pole circuits, as well as all the way down to our smart devices, so our connected wiring devices, the plugs, switches, outlets, dimmers, etc. Uh, the smart versions of Z-Wave, Wi-Fi. They do everything you would expect a, a smart device like that to do, but they are also meters, and more importantly, they act within this same ecosystem. So one ecosystem, one app for the consumer to use to see what's going on at the device level, to see what's going on at the branch level, to schedule things, uh, whether that's for energy efficiency uh, or just peace of mind to know, hey, I left the house and I left the oven on, I can turn it off without turning back to going back to the house or just check on it and know that it, that it that I did turn it off right and not have to go back to the house. So there's a lot there, um, but let's go into a little more detail around it. So as you look at more of the, the component levels of what's going, here's the energy center uh, that's in California. But as we go forward into 2023, we'll have a version of this by the end of 2023, really for just about any market uh, in the United States. And that will come with factory installed Wiser Energy. And what Wiser Energy does, it's one set of ZTs just around the mains, and it's monitoring not only that total usage, but it's actually using uh, basically AI algorithms to see the different signatures of different devices, appliances, et cetera, in the home. So you put, you literally put it in, connect it to Wi-Fi or ethernet, walk away, and it learns, it watches, and it sees, and it pops up and says, hey, I see your HVAC, I see your dryer, I see your coffee maker, I see your garage door opener, I see your dishwasher, I see your refrigerator, I see your microwave, and, and it just finds us. So from a commissioning standpoint, really low, really low commissioning. Um, not sure why we're getting a change there. Okay. Um, 
Uh, and then again, as I mentioned, the connected relays, which then not only give you that branch level monitoring, but also control at that branch level and then the smart devices. Then, so practical, you know, so is this just theory uh, or has this really been sold? So we, we've actually sold this in two different projects with KB Home. One, the first one before this project here was actually down in San Diego uh, at Sundance Community with KB and it had, two, it had 128 homes that have that energy center, wiser energy, smart wiring devices as a standard in all 128 homes. But more importantly, and this was just announced at the beginning of November, we are in the midst of a second project with KB Home, Sun Power, the Department of Energy, uh, University of California, Irvine, and SoCal Edison for a uh, 219 home community microgrid. So all 219 of these homes have that same energy center smart wiring device solution at the home level, but also uh, have batteries at each house and also community batteries. So what's happening here, this is a Schneider designed microgrid for, for a residential community, but this community will use the solar on the on the homes themselves, not only to charge the batteries in the homes, but also to charge those community batteries. And this, and then with the use of the energy center, when this home, when this community has to go off grid due to a power outage or other issue, then uh, they will the non-critical loads will automatically be shut off, critical loads only, and all 219 homes automated. Homeowner does nothing, right? It just happens. And these homes, this community, with these uh, batteries at the home level and community batteries, uh, depending on solar production, could go on for days or weeks without uh, grid power from SoCal Edison, right? So this is going to be, it's a first of its kind. It's going to be an, an amazing um, opportunity for us to learn and for us to then go from here and learn how can we make this even uh, easier and easier to do going forward so that it becomes more practical uh, and affordable uh, going forward into uh, other markets. So I'll move into our wiring device line. So Schneider Electric is actually the number two wiring device manufacturer in the world, just hasn't been in the US market until April of last year. So about a year and a half or so. Um, and we tried to bring some some unique uh, features to our to our line. It's uh, it's simple line. So we one of the things we've done is we've taken a lot of the the um, optional features that you pay more for with other manufacturers, such as pressure plates or uh, ground holes or uh, um, uh, or grounding on the on the device in case you're using metal boxes. Uh, and we've made all those standards. So our outlet, we only make one. We only make one outlet. It has tamper resistance. It has pressure plates. It has ground hole. It has a grounding mechanism for metal, metal boxes, all in one. And we sell it at a standard price. Some of our competition actually has up to eight different devices to meet what we put in one device, and that we only charge a standard price for. So we have those pressure plates on all all of our devices, uh, and it also provides some you know, some other advantages we can go up to, actually up to 10 gauge uh, if need be, but we can use the uh, copper clad aluminum as well, uh, standard that's been tested with, uh, uh, with copper weld uh, themselves. And so if you're, if you're out there and getting more and more pressure to, to look at using copper clad aluminum, uh, these devices are gonna be able to, uh, to work with that with no problem. And then from a smart, standpoint again we build uh, everything you would expect a wi-fi or z-wave device to do but also you have that energy monitoring there that can, and brings that all back to one ecosystem just a quick look you know it's a full line but it is a simple line so uh we we maybe have about well, one third one fourth the SKUs, but we have everything you need and that's simply because we're taking a lot of those upgrade option features and we just put them in as standard and sell one device instead of six, seven, eight different devices. Smart, so let's go into our smart panel solution. So we talked about the energy center, but quite frankly today, if you wanted to sell a smart panel 
into any home in the United States, you can do it today. You just need a simple QO plug on neutral panel. Uh, you retrofit the Wiser Energy into it, which takes about five, 10 minutes. Uh, if that, uh, add in some smart relays, add in some, the, the smart wiring devices, and you have the same experience that I described with the energy center for any house uh, in, in the United States where you might want to put in a smart panel. And again, as we go forward and we define exactly what the definition of a smart panel is going to be under the Inflation Reduction Act, you might be able to go into a home and do a, pan, uh, a panel upgrade with a QO panel one smart relay and wiser energy, and that might qualify as a smart panel, and you actually give the homeowner more and uh, make more money, but they save more because of the rebates. It, is, it could be a potentially huge opportunity, especially in the retrofit market. So just a little bit more detail on wiser energy. So you see it here mounted at the bottom. Uh, two CTs around the mains, uh, wired to a two pole for power, has an antenna so that you can uh, send the information through Wi-Fi. Uh, our newest version also has an ethernet provision. So if you wanna bring ethernet to the box, then you can put this on uh, ethernet and not rely on Wi-Fi at all, which could be very beneficial depending on maybe where the panel is located at home. And in addition, uh, we also, there's a second port for a second set of CTs that you can use in solar installations so that not only can you monitor and measure the grid usage, but you can also monitor and me measure your solar production. And in that instance, then you're the, the, through the app, the homeowner is able to see what's my production, what's my grid usage, how often am I net zero, how much money am I saving, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So this is just a quick look at the packaging. This is everything that comes in the box. I mentioned the second set of CTs for solar. This is available in wholesale. This is available in retail. Uh, again, very simple install. Retail shelf price is about, I think, to $199 or $249 today. Uh, similar or better pricing in wholesale if you're interested. And uh, this is something you can add in very simply and provide a lot of value. And again, with the Inflation Reduction Act, this could be a key, a key feature in being able to qualify those panels as smart panels. Talked about the installation already, so I'll skip over that. And so let's talk a little bit about the technology in detail. So those CTs, as I mentioned, are not only me measuring that total usage, but it's looking inside those main uh, wires and it's looking for the signature waves of for you know for different devices so it's able to for example separate out oh there's a signature for an hvac unit or uh, a light or a garage uh, door opener etc and so it disaggregates that and is able to say oh there's your hvac there's your lighting there's a tv there's your dryer right based on these different signatures that it sees in in the main wires Amazing technology. The other nice part about it, again, it's essentially zero commissioning. So you install this and over you know, a few days, a week, a month or so, it is gonna look and find these different devices. But the other added benefit of this is it's not a, it's not a static setup, meaning it's not, oh, I set it up, now the homeowners added something to their house. Now they, or if they don't know how to, they gotta get a, a, someone to help them uh, set that new device up in the house. And what happens in those situations, they don't get set up, the system falls out of use. Well, the brilliance of this is it's whatever gets added electrically and uses electricity is going to get monitored and should be found uh, in a fairly short period of time. So it's just, it's basically a self commissioning system that's always renewing itself. So we talked a little bit about uh, the the Wiser Energy. So let's talk a little bit more about the Wiser Control Relays. So these are the relays that are just now launching. Come in two different flavors, if you want. Uh, well, here on the right is a single channel or sing, uh, uh, two pole. So you would use this for a two pole circuit, like an electric water heater, maybe HVAC unit. And then this is a, a, a two single pole unit. So if you had two single poles that you wanted to run in 
run in and out of this, then you can control those. So you simply plug them on just like a breaker. You wire from your standard breaker in and out of this, and now you've got that monitoring control through a relay and can see that on an app. Very modular, very granular. So the, you know, the benefit we see to this approach is, uh, you know, there's other smart panels in the market where the premise is the homeowner wants every single circuit to be controlled and monitored well. I don't think that's the case. It's also very expensive. Uh, this gives the homeowner and by extension, you all as electrical contractors, the ability to suggest, well, maybe I just really want to understand what my bigger loads are doing. So I'm going to use a few of these single channel 240 uh, uh, relays to monitor HVAC, dryer, electric water heater, et cetera. Um, and I'm going to, and then I'm going to use the wiring devices at the at the plug or, or outlet level or plug or switch level to understand what's going on control devices at that discrete level we touched on this so we'll skip over that again this is the the energy center it's uh, received a lot of rewards the latest one was uh, time magazine uh, recognized it as as one of uh, the best inventions of 2022 so again, while this is only in California today, this, this approach is going to extend across the entire United States. And what it, what it does for you is you think about it, if anyone's familiar with the solar install, so you have your panel, you transfer switch, you have your backup panel, you might have four, six, four to six different enclosures. What this essentially does is eliminates almost all those enclosures to where you basically get down to panel, inverter, and a battery if you're adding battery and you're done, right? The other nice part about this approach, by put it, by using a split bus uh, uh, busing system in the, in the panel, you have your main panel and your backup panel all in one. So whether it's during the time of construction or down the road and there's a, a need to change what is critical or non-critical on a panel, it's as simple as opening up the panel and moving the breaker to a different part of the panel. And that's it. There's no tearing up drywall. There's no putting in a panel. There's no moving breakers from one panel to the other, uh, which is very costly and a lot, and maybe causes a lot of drywall work or otherwise. This makes it real simple and assumes you are going to have changes. So let's make it easy to have changes uh, on a go forward basis. And then uh, another nice feature of the the upcoming solutions is, is you see this in a in a a wider enclosure. The newer solutions will go to the single bay width, so that'll make it even easier, especially in new construction. As you're as you're framing out for the panel, you won't have to do any special framing or headers in order to to put in this larger panel. You'll be able to put in just a standard width panel and still have all the same features. This is just, uh, let's see if this animation works or not. Maybe not. No, nope, can't get to it. Uh, anyhow, this was going to show you how those those six uh, different uh, panels come down into to one in a battery, but I think you guys understand what I was describing there. So again, this just gives you a look at what a what a typical solar installation would look like. So imagine all, all of this here on the left basically goes away into one panel. You have a panel, an inverter, and a battery. A lot simpler, a lot less labor, uh, and, a, and a lot uh, more compact and aesthetically pleasing for the homeowner. So you get something that looks like that. Uh, I want to save a little time for um, questions. We covered the the X series uh, smart switches. Uh, one of the features here is you may not be using the smart connected devices with Wiser Energy. Maybe it's just using smart devices, and in that case, we have the the Wiser Home app where those devices can be commissioned and controlled, and and they. But it also provides you the energy monitoring information. If you decide later on, the homeowner decides to add in the Wiser Energy, they add that in, and now those devices can still be seen and controlled in the Wiser home, but they can also be seen and controlled inside 
the Wiser Energy app as well. So the consumer has a choice of consolidating down into one app or using the two different apps, depending on situation. And that's it. it leaves us about 10 minutes for any Q&A. Okay. Um, so we've gotten a few questions here. Um, one person is asking about, um, they asked early on if you could mention the article numbers as you discussed. I know that it was, there, there were, were there article numbers on the slide deck as you were going through it? You're NEC. talking about on the. You're talking about the National NEC. Electrical Code. Yes, I'm sorry. The yeah. NEC article yeah. number. Yeah, if you, yeah. Let's uh, let's uh, scroll back up to to those and uh, maybe somebody. You're while you're talking. Yep. Let's I'm sorry. Here. I'll, I'll get I'll get you there, Rob. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, I tried to mention where I could um, on several of the articles in the NEC that are pertinent to those changes. Um, so let's get back there to that slide. Um, yeah, uh, that's 2020. You want and to so 20, you can see there's some of the articles are mentioned. So uh, maybe I guess a screenshot or something that you can look there. Yeah, so yeah. You got 210.8, 230.67, and 230.85 on the 2020 code. Yeah, on uh, any on, hold, hold on there, Greg. Uh, or no, Brad. Um, back here. Um, on GFCI protection, we've always found that to be, or as long as I've been been working with the code, 210.8 is where you'll find all your ground fault for people protection requirements. Um, so make sure you check there. A surge now, I think you'll find most of that under 220. Um, and so you'll see some of that there. Okay, and then you get to, is that the 2023 slide up? Brad. That's a 2023. You want to go back to 2020? No, uh -uh. I, I'm just having a hard okay. time seeing it in the yeah, small, yeah. Yeah. small screen that I've got. So I'm going to open up my presentation and look sure. at that. <clears throat> so let's see here. Um, and folks will be able to come back and watch the recording and they can sure. um, see the different slides too to see which the different codes codes are <clears throat> yeah for receptacles that's under 21052 so that you know maybe under like c2 and c3 um there are also some things i didn't mention there there are provisions now for that peninsula i talked about that you can install a future receptacle outlet um you know as long as it as long as it you know uh, meets the requirement for installation of cable or raceway for a box within an island, which is under 312. Um, I didn't mention, you know, a couple of other things uh, in in the code um, for surge protection. Um, some of that you can find in 215. That's the overall requirement now, which is new, 215.18. Um, which says now uh, the feeder supply for uh, all dwelling units, dormitories, guest rooms, guest suites of hotels, motels, patient sleeping room, in nursing homes, limited care facilities, um, which uh, now requires uh, on the feeder to have uh, surge protection. So I didn't really mention all of that because again, we were staying focused on single family. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's 215.18. Um, um, some I, of the things that you'll find under EV charging would be under 220.53, 220.57. Um, and then there's some stuff in there about uh, branch feeding supply equipment under 625. And uh, I think the energy cool. management system, again, falls back under 220.70. So those were the articles that I mentioned. Okay. And, you know, if, if folks have any questions about those specific articles, the um, your contact information is in one of the modules on their console. Um, yeah, so I would I'll... also uh, encourage everyone here uh, to, to go to NFPA.com. Um, you can, for no charge, um, register there. And for no charge, you can get access to the code. Now, you can't download or copy that, but you can go in and research the various sections and you can see the actual article of the code that's pertinent. So that's under the NFPA's website. It's a service that they offer. 
um, that's no charge. So you can go in and look through the various sections. You just can't copy it or, you know, take it away or print it from there. But uh, it's always helpful for me to, to just go to that NFPA website and, and, and look that up. So that's a, that's a little tip that if you didn't know, you could do that. You can go to the um, any uh, NFPA.com and search under NFPA 70E, and it, you can go in and find your articles. There's a search button there, too. That's, that's great information. Um, someone's asking what the site is again. It's NFPA.com. Um, so we had a couple of questions about why is there energy? Um, yeah. And I apologize. I can hear myself echoing. Um, so is why is there energy only for residential applications or does it have commercial applications? And so, if so can it determine load plug versus motor versus uh, lighting? Yeah. So today um, it is a, it is a single phase solution. So that's going to be primarily residential. Could you have some single phase applications in commercial? Yeah, potentially you could use it in in those limited applications. But today it's that's where it's uh, where it's targeted. We're certainly looking down the road to three phase applications and expanding uh, beyond that uh, from a from a load identification standpoint, it it will identify down to an appliance level. So, for instance, in my own house, I had um, I had two plugs side by side uh, on the same circuit, and I have I had a Baymore coffee maker, a Capresso coffee grinder, and a Breville tea kettle plugged into three of the four outlets. And, and it saw each of those three things separately. Uh, now it takes time, you know, it's, there, it, this is, it, it is not a perfect technology. It's gonna take some days to find those things. Do I really care about those, uh, those devices? Um, me personally, no, but you know, what's interesting is we've had, we've had customers that have actually used it specifically to see a coffee maker turning on in the morning, not in their own house, but in their parents' house, because they know the mom and dad don't use the um, uh, programmable feature on the coffee maker. <laughs> they actually get up and push a button. And therefore they know if the coffee maker goes off, they know mom or dad got out of bed that morning and everything's okay at the house. Yeah, Brent, um, so, let me add on that, too. It, it is today a single phase only. It is also uh, 12240 and uh, yeah. 12208 Y, so you cannot put it on <clears throat> 408 applications. Right. And then also, let me add that one of the guys we used to work with, um, he he put uh, that on his dad's home. His, his mother had passed away, and his dad was there and not in good health. Um, he noticed that uh, the stove had been on one, uh, for for mm -hmm. an extended period of time. I think it was three hours. Yeah. So um, the, he called. His dad didn't answer the phone. He knew that the oven was running, so he, he got in the car, jumped in the car, and ran over there. It turned out that his dad had left a pan on the stove turned on, and a towel from the kitchen towel had been, uh, you know, located nearby there and was smoldering, ready to start a fire. So a lot yeah. of things there. I can tell you from a personal experience, um, my HVAC system for my downstairs unit um, was an original install going back to like 91. I knew it was going to fail at some point. I started expanding up on the load calculations. I could see the startup on the, on the motor and then mm -hmm. see it, how it ran down to steady state. I noticed that the steady state volt or amperage was, was fluctuating. I noticed that startup peaks were changing from time to time. I knew my uh, compressor was going to fail. Um, this was last year, and I knew the compressor was going to fail. And I thought, well, let me just wait through August and get into October when in the when the HVAC guys are maybe not as crammed, and yeah. maybe I can do it then. Well, guess what? Labor Day weekend on a Sunday, Sunday oh. my unit failed. I knew I yeah. could see it. So there's a lot of applications when you dig into it that are really, really worthwhile. So Yeah, yeah I left that. Great, that piece of I left out the predictive maintenance aspect of that, Rob. But, you know, I had a similar instance in my own house where 
I was seeing in the in the app timeline that my downstairs HVAC was going on and off every six to eight seconds. So it was just cycling on and off. Called the HVAC uh, folks, he came out and I said, hey, I think it's, I think it might be a capacitor about to fail. And he looked at me like, yeah, okay, how would you know that, <laughs> right? So he opens up, tests the capacitor, he's like, holy cow, how did you know that? Showed him the app, he actually, he actually made me open the panel so I could show him the wise energy and what it was doing. So, um, yeah, and we're, and here's, you know, a, we're here's, a quick, here's another quick question from Mike Starr. Um, Lotus uh, Loftus Engineering, CSEDs would be really helpful to know what solar ready means. So what that means in a panel is we have marked the product so that the panel board bus bars are indicated. It tells you what the ampere rating of the panel is, which may be different from that of the main that's connected. So when we say solar ready, that's what it means. And in our CSED devices, the ones that are used on the West Coast, they also come with a little label that says solar supply. So the breaker that's backfed um, will have a label that can be stuck onto it. So I hope I answered the question there. Yeah, and reminded me, Rob, another another benefit of the, the relays I, that I left out, I, I alluded to it, but didn't go into detail was, you know, as we go forward and develop this, what we, what we hope to do in conjunction with utilities is to say, hey, instead of upgrading to a 400 amp service, why don't we use those relays as a way to ensure that a service never exceeds 200 amps, right? Now yeah. that's not a feature that's available today, but that's certainly one in the near term that we're hoping to develop and and to get uh, approved at, at 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 the utility level. And I think we'll see uh, interest there because the opportunity to avoid, you know, not only the costly upgrade in the house, but potentially costly upgrade to the utility infrastructure serving that community. Uh, mm -hmm. is very attractive to folks. Right. And another, another application for Wiser is to install it on a home that's entertaining um, either solar and or generator um, power so that you know exactly you could size the load for the amount of uh, uh, receptacles or circuits that, that want to be powered. So, it, you know, so in yeah. other words, maybe rather than putting a whole house generator in, you know, you could downsize that a little bit. Or in my case, I have a standby generator. So rather than putting a 50 amp that's, you know, uh, on the outside, I twist in. Um, I, I, I can get by with the loads I need with a with an AK dub generator. Um, there's another question in here, Brad, about I guess this is about surge connected equipment coverage under the warranty. Uh, what we ask you to do, or homeowners that have an, have a, have a surge issue, is to uh, submit your claims to your insurance company, and then submit those to CCC Claims and, and Schneider Electric. And we cover what the homeowner's policy doesn't cover. So I hope I answered that question. Great. Yeah. Well, I want to be respectful of folks' time. It is now 2.02. Sure. Um, and I, I'm sorry if we didn't get to your question, um, but please feel free to contact our presenters via the email links in the module. Um, or you can pop back on the recording and it should still be clickable. Um, so yeah, we'll try to answer some of those questions, you know, mm -hmm. through the chat here. Okay. Great. But on behalf of Electrical Contractor Magazine and Schneider Electric, um, I want to thank everyone once again for attending. A big thank you to our two presenters, Rob and Brad, for their time and a fantastic presentation. So please don't forget to fill out that survey. It's going to pop up at the end of your screen. It's going to pop up at the end of the webinar on your screen. Um, and be on the lookout in your email for the recording of this event, which will be available soon. And if you enjoyed this webinar, please feel free to forward that email that you're going to get to anyone else that you think would benefit as well so that they can register and view it. So we hope everyone has a great rest of your day, and we hope to see you at a future webinar. Thanks, everyone.